Thank you. Yeah, as mentioned, I'm Jonas. Uh, I'm at Eclipse Source. We are a company building tools and IDEs for our customers. Today, I would like to talk about an open source project that we drive, the Thea IDE, an AI-powered IDE which is open, transparent, and flexible. Um, the Thea IDE is not new. We are happy to have over 20,000 stars on GitHub. However, the AI support is new, and that's what I want to talk about today. But wait a minute, you might ask yourself the question, why do we need yet another AI-powered IDE? Now, it's very obvious that AI-powered IDEs are not a trend. They're becoming very omnipresent. Uh, McKinsey predicts that in 2028, 75% uh, of software engineers will use those, such tools. I think they're wrong. I think the number will be higher, to be honest. Um, however, if we look at the current market, we see, uh, or we see an issue. Now, while the market for IDEs and tools have been a strong field for open source since decades, when it comes to AI-powered solutions, the most popular solutions out there, many of them are actually not open source anymore. They are proprietary. And this raises concerns, not only in terms of data privacy, we send a lot of sensitive data to those two solutions, but also in terms of innovation. If we look at the history of the internet, it has never been a good idea if such an important innovation is driven by one or few proprietary vendors. We believe in the power of open source and the power of the developers, and we want to give you as developers control over your own tools. Now, how do we do that, and how, what does open, transparent, and flexible mean? Let's look at that. So um, you might know an AI-powered IDE that we see here on the left side, it somehow communicates with an underlying LLM. Now, with proprietary solutions, this LLM is often fixed, right? You have to buy a subscription model, and then you talk to their models that they provide. In the Thea IDE, you have the choice. So you can connect to any LLM that can be hosted in the cloud, hosted on-premise. It can be a proprietary one, an open source one, no limits. And we can even run the LLM locally on your machine, and you don't need, require any internet connection, and no data will leave your device. Now, if you talk to different LLMs, you might know you need to adapt the prompts sometimes. And that's also true if you want to adapt the tool to your own personal workflows. In the Thea IDE, we have a prompt editor. You can look at all the prompts of all agents, and you can adapt that to your needs. And finally, the communication is completely transparent. So you can see the communication that's going on, and you can control exactly which data is sent and which not. So you have everything under control. Now, I don't want to bore you with more slides. Just, let's just look at that in a demo, in a quick demo. So, um, and I hope internet works. <laughs> this is the Thea IDE. Um, we see a chat here on the left side, and we see a code editor in the middle. Down here, we see a history view. And now, let's just do something simple. So, if I press Enter here, uh, it works. Uh, we get an AI-powered code completion. Now, this looks very simple, but if you think about that, no static code completion tool could do that because it somehow guessed from the function name that I want to print Hello World here, right? So it's already pretty smart. Now, um, as mentioned, I can see the communication down here, but looking is boring. Let's, let's tweak that. Now, what I can do is I can open the prompt that is uh, used for code completion, and now I can change that to my own preferences. And let's just say, actually, Hello World is wrong. Um, and let's say, consider that we are at Eclipse Demo Day today, and let me just save that, and then go back here, and then just do the same thing again, and now I adapted my code generation, right? Now it's aware that we are at this event today. Now what else can I do? For example, I can use also the chat, um, and let me document my source code, for example. Um, so I ask the LLM, hey, can you document this source code? And it does that, I really love that feature really well-documented Hello World now. Um, currently, I'm talking to JetGPT, but let's assume I don't want that and I don't have internet, so let's talk to a local LLM. So what I'm doing now is I change the configuration of this agent from JetGPT to an open source model, Llama 3.2, and I don't have a hosted version of that. So let's just start that locally. So what I do is I select start Llama file and then the uh, 3.2 that I want to start, and now, boom, it's running on, on this machine, on this laptop. And to prove that to you, what I can do is go to the chat and ask it, hey, which LLM are you? And now I'm talking to Lima. Actually, <laughs> interesting enough, not always it tells me that. But um, believe me, now I'm talking to a model running on this computer. Nothing is leaving my machine. This would work without internet. All right, let's get back to the slides. Now, what else can we do? So I told you it's flexible, so you can very easily add your own agents, even on the fly. So for example, if I wanted to automate this documentation use case, I can just add an agent for that. And we use this capability ourselves to extend the system. For example, we are integrating either a popular code generation tool directly in the IDE and many other solutions. 
Now, we talked a lot about generating code. As a developer, if an LLM generates code, can you actually just use that? You might have raised yourself the, the question. Uh, we have a partial solution for that um, by we integrate an open source tool called ScanOSS. Now, what that does is whenever uh, code is generated, for example, in the chat, we send a hash of this code to a public library that hosts all the code that is available in the internet. And what we can see in a second in this video, um, the first snippet is fine, we have a check mark, no matches found. The second snippet is also fine, no matches found. But the third one, we have a warning there. And if we click on that, it actually tells us we have a 42% match against an existing code snippet in the internet. And we, we see exactly where this is coming from, and now we can even review the license where we actually whether we are actually allowed to use this code or not, right? This is really important. Like many tools don't, don't have any transparency in this, uh, in this area. Now, last but not least, I would like to mention uh, what I'm showing you today is a tool, the Thea ID. What's underneath that is a framework called Thea AI, and the purpose is to build custom AI power tools. And the, the, what that means for you, in Thea AI and the Thea ID, you can tailor literally everything. So you're not stuck to the existing UX. So what we see here in this video, for example, is a Thea AI-based tool with a diagram editor, and the chat is now able to influence the diagram. So you can say, model a coffee machine, uh, change the layout or whatever. Um, and you're also not stuck to the chat, right? So for example, here we have a button that takes the chat away and integrates the most sophisticated assistant interface that there's ever been. Right? Some of you might remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. So we are fully open source and vendor neutral. Here you see a list of companies that strategically adopt Thea to build their own uh, tools and IDEs. Um, so we are not alone developing this. Um, the AI support and the Thea IDE that I've demonstrated is currently in experimental phase. The underlying framework Thea AI is already used in production. So we use this since, since quite some time to build AI powered tools. We can do that today. And we are happy to have over 2,000 downloads today for the uh, Thea IDE. All right, before I come to the conclusion, I really want to emphasize again that I believe the time is now for, for openness um, because we as developers, I think we can decide now whether we want to live in a world where all these AI port solutions are driven by a few proprietary vendors or whether we have an open community and we have our tools still under control. Now, what are my key takeaways for you? If you're a developer, try the tool. You can download it for free and use it. No limits. No, by the way, no telemetry. Um, you can provide feedback and you can adapt it to your needs and contribute if you like. If you're a company and you're looking for an IDE to deploy for your developers, evaluate the Thea IDE as an open solution that gives you full control. And consider to sponsor the project if you like, right? There is commercial support available. And if you want to build your own tool, AI, your own AI powered tool, you can use the underlying platform Thea and Thea AI to do that, to create your own tailored tool offering. And be aware, we as a company, we provide services, implementation, and consulting for that. Um, even though the field is young, we already have years of experience doing that for different domains. Um, so get in contact with me if you're interested in that. Now, I have my contact details here on the slide, so you can scan this QR code. And I'm, of course, also at the booth. And now, while you scan that, potentially, uh, let's watch at one last demo. The Thea ID was not supporting Anthropic a couple of weeks ago. So what I actually did is I asked the Thea ID, hey, look at your own source code. Can you extend yourself with an Anthropic adapter? And here we watch the Thea ID extending itself and implementing its own support for Anthropic. So maybe this is a first step towards AGI and bootstrapping now. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.